Good morning. I believe we are live. I am so glad to be here. I am broadcasting to you from the outskirts of Houston, Texas. And it is a cloudy day today and a little bit windy, but it's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to get warm enough, uh, maybe even to a point where we'll be able to let the kids go to the pool, which they've been really, really looking forward to doing. They haven't been able to do because although it is not cold like it is in New York and New Jersey where we're from, um, it's still a little chilly. Um, I am broadcasting to you from a campground near Lake Conroe in Texas. Um, I was going to broadcast from the lake. Um, we went scouting yesterday and I found some points that would be really awesome to broadcast from. Uh, but uh, I only have one hotspot. So I realized that this morning and if I take it right now, then my children will not be able to do their studies. So um, I decided to stay, stick around here and share the hotspot, share the goodness, share the wealth. Um, and maybe in the next few days we'll figure something out and I'll be able to broadcast from the lake and you will be able to see just how beautiful, how beautiful uh, this planet is because that's what we're learning today. So I think I'm going to start. I have a few joiners. I'm so happy to see you, all of you. Um, and today I'm going to be covering a topic that's very close to my heart. Um, it's been a journey that um, we invested a lot in, uh, myself and my partner, uh, a lot of learning, a lot of rolling up our sleeves and working to make marriage magical again. So uh, these days, uh, for those of you who have managed to watch the last broadcasts, I'm on a journey to share the eight journeys of a mama's life with you in greater depth um, and finally get these journeys out of my head, out of my heart um, and into digital pixels and hopefully reach your mind and heart and inspire you perhaps to start your own journey. So maybe a spiritual journey, maybe a journey of body and mind, a journey inwards by organizing our life outwards. So stick around, it should get interesting. Last Tuesday, I shared the self-care journey and how you can design your own self-care journey. Check it out, it's on my YouTube channel. Look up Seagal Becker Saban. Um, it's also on the Journeys for Moms page. On last Wednesdays, I shared the nutrition and the cooking journey and how you can design your own nutrition and cooking journeys. Um, on, with an accountability partner, of course, every single journey um, I recommend doing with an accountability partner because we are busy, busy, busy mamas. And if we do not have accountability, chances are, except for the rare few of us who have uh, very high self-discipline, uh, we're going to quit. So we need that kind of support. On Thursday last week, I shared the parenting journey. Look it up on the page. And I discussed all the parenting journeys that I did and how you can design your own parenting journey in 2020. And on Friday, I share the fitness journey and how you can design your very own fitness journey. If you've watched any of them, would you chime in in the comments so I'll know? Um, and if this is your first broadcast, welcome. I am so, so um, excited to share um, everything I learned about making marriage magical again. Okay, so why am I sharing all this info about journeys with you daily? Why? Why am I taking up this precious uh, mama time? Oh, thank you for the loves <laughs> in your day that I know is hard to spare in order to discuss the journeys that I've done. Why? Because these journeys saved me. I'm gonna repeat this. The journeys that I designed for me save me and I would love for them to save you too. Save you from what? You ask, why do I need to be saved? Well, maybe you don't, okay? Um, 
what it would save you from is from the mundane mothering journey. Just a second. Ah, press the button by mistake. From the mediocrity of the daily mothering tasks. From the lackluster daily routines of mothering. Um, it's like a black and white TV. Do you remember those? I'm dating myself here. <laughs> Sometimes mothering goes into black and white mode. We have laundry, dishes, diapers, homework. Chime in in the comments. What else? Extracurriculars. We cook. We serve. We clean. Uh, cook, serve, clean. Wash, rinse, repeat, 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 repeat. So there must be more to mothering than this. And there is. So many years ago, when I was in my own dark place in myself, where mamas go when they do not nourish their bodies and their souls, I had to find a solution to getting back control of my life. I was very ill with vertigo. Uh, and my life was falling apart. Please chime in in the comments if you've ever had a situation where you became very ill as a mother. Um, after months and months of doctor's appointments and reading book after book after book in order to figure out how to heal me, I finally took a pen and paper and I decided to organize my life on paper first, literally. I needed to roadmap my mama life from scratch. So where do you start? What are the elements of a mom's life? So I opened a page in a notebook. I was going to bring a notebook to show you. Just imagine it here in my hand. <laughs> and I began to write. So I opened to page one and I wrote parenting. And then I opened to turn the page and I wrote marriage. And then I turned the page. And I wrote child education. And then I turned the page. And I wrote business and family finance. And then I turned the page. And I wrote home nation. And then I turned the page. And I wrote nutrition and cooking. And then I turned the page. And I wrote fitness. And finally, I turned to page eight and I wrote self care. So now I had eight pages each with its own title that describes an element in my mama life that needs deeper introspection and deeper reflection. Okay, now what? What do you do? Well, now I had to fill the page with a roadmap or a plan, uh, step by step, just like you would organize a big cupboard and give your attention to a different drawer every time so is this making sense so far please chime in in the comments so i'll know is this resonating with anyone and i'm gonna keep telling my story as i await your comments so i started filling out page after page with my thoughts and my ideas and my plans for how to improve that element in my life. So after brainstorming on each page and just jotting down, jotting, jotting, jotting ideas of how to improve each element of this life, I needed to tie things together into a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step plan, a journey out of my own darkness. And that is how magical journeys were born. Because if you want to get somewhere in life, in your mama life, you need a roadmap and you need a destination. It's the basics of traveling. It's the basic of transforming from one place to another, whether it be physically or spiritually. So if my life is a mess and I have no roadmap, how in the world will I ever reach any destination. So granted, I could hire a coach who can help me with each of these categories. Back then, when I was healing myself, so I could hire 
a fitness coach to help me with fitness. I could hire a nutrition coach to help me with nutrition. I could hire a parenting coach to help me with my parenting. I could hire a marriage coach to help me with my marriage and on and on and on. But honestly, this was not within our means. It just wasn't. So it finally hit me. I am my own coach and I need to coach me out of this mess that I have created unintentionally. Because no one teaches you how to create an amazing and empowering mama life, right? Most of us are just winging it. We're in survival mode. We either replicate what we saw our own moms do or <laughs> we rebel and we do the exact opposite of what we saw our moms do. But there are so many more options for creating a magical mama life. And I'm here to share those with you because if I can help one mom, maybe it's you, and show her the magic of the journeys in her own life, in her own home. Yeah, yeah, between the pile of laundry waiting to be folded and the pile of dishes waiting to be washed. You see those piles, don't you? And the baby whose diaper needs to be changed, somewhere in between all of those and within all of those lies magic. And we're here to invite that magic into our life today, into your life today. All right. So today we're going to dive into the fifth journey, journey number five out of eight, the marriage and relationship journey. And at the end, I'm going to be sharing a challenge for those courageous enough to embark. <laughs> you can find and print the challenge uh, in the first comment. I'm going to add it uh, as soon as the broadcast is over. So it's just print and go. Uh, so let's talk about the marriage journey, shall we? Are you ready? Chime in in the comments, please, if you are ready for me to start discussing how to make marriage magical again. So marriage, this is not an easy journey, is it? No one tells you when you're in the process of buying that white dress and that tuxedo that this will be the easiest part of the marriage journey. Certainly didn't feel that way. <laughs> no one tells you that you're going to have to work daily and tend to this garden every single day in order for it to be the anchor that it can be in your life. I see you ladies are liking this with all the hearts that I'm getting. <laughs> no one prepares you that you will grow older. Maybe you're going to gain weight. Maybe your partner is going to start balding. And things won't always look as young and as beautiful as they did on that perfect day you two married. And you will need to look deep. Oh, so deep inside of yourself and your partner. Nobody tells you that in order to find the mountains and mountains of breathtaking beauty that what you had 20 or 30 years ago or 10 years ago when you married doesn't come close to compare. Nobody tells you that. No one tells you when you get married that the honeymoon stage, it's over at some point and you will need to mindfully create and recreate new honeymoon moments in a mindful manner because life is not going to toss it to you naturally. No one tells you that life takes over with a million tasks on your to-do list and the easiest and quickest thing to toss from your to-do list is your partner and your intimate time together. No one prepares you for that. I'd love your thoughts in the comments about that. <laughs> no one tells you all that. 
this and many other uh, secrets uh, of a long-term marriage or a relationship, they're not often spoken about and you really have to persist in your relationship and approach it with high levels of curiosity in order to uncover and dis discover these wonders. So are you ready to hear about some Making Marriage Magical Again journeys? So um, when me and Guy, uh, who maybe I'm going to invite to one of these journey talks so you can meet him and he can share his perspective, uh, would you like that? Would you like him to come on? Please uh, chime in in the comments. So when me and Guy realized that um, we would like to embark on Making Marriage Magical Again uh, journey, we listed the following ideas that I'm going to share with you right now. So we literally opened a notebook and started writing ideas. How do we make our marriage magical again? Okay, so you ready for this? All right. So idea number one that we jotted down, long, juicy conversations daily. Talk, 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 talk. Open communication daily, every single day, seven days a week. Our best talks, we have five kids, we're busy. We rarely have privacy. Our best talks were often in the shower. I know, TMI. Listen, you got to talk when you got to talk. Seriously, if you are not talking to your partner every day, you are missing out on something truly, truly important. So long, juicy conversations daily. Next idea, intimate time together happening weekly. I know this is a little bit taboo and people don't talk about it. Well, let's, let's open this up a little bit. All right. You got to make sure both of you that you are finding time. No, that you are making time to be intimate together. This is critical for any relationship. I know this is not a subject that's spoken about often, but it's, it's critical. And it's the first thing to fly out the window in our busy mama parenting journey, right? Um, we learned that um, there are seasons in life where you, we, have to open the organizers and literally schedule it in. Yeah. Schedule in the intimate times you're going to be together. You're going to be communicating intimately. It's a must. It's the glue. And there's so much more to say about this. So please write me in the comments if you want me to dive deeper into the subject. Because I have a lot to say. <laughs> All right. Idea not, number three. If you are not feeling in connection with your partner. Or let's say tensions are high. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is something that works wonders for us. So we sit down, we make ourselves tea, and we name five good things about our partner. Five. Five. <laughs> okay? It could be characteristics that we like. It could be something about the way he or she looks, uh, the things that he does that bring you joy, something about his fathering, something about her mothering. Okay, we sit down, we make tea, and we tell each other five things that we like about each other. Then, now remember, this is in times of tension. We're not so happy-go-lucky. We're not, you know, crazy in love. All right, so after you shared five good things about each other, um, you share three things that you would love for your partner to take a closer look at. So in other words, three things that make you uncomfortable or you are not happy with. And then your partner shares three things that he's uncomfortable with um, or he's not happy with. And he would like for you to um, take a closer look at, maybe change, maybe improve. Okay? So you share it gently. Uh, this is a very intimate conversation. All right? You share it. He shares three things, no criticism, just sharing from the heart. And then the next day, now we're talking, this is in periods of high tension. The next day you go again, five things that you like about each other, five new things that you like about each other, three things that 
you would like that your partner to either change or you're just not comfortable with. And the next day again. In very rough periods, this exercise was a lifesaver for us and brought us back into the circle of magic. Um, it lets our partner know that we see the beauty in him or her. We still see it through the tensions and through the arguments. And it also lets them know what troubles us about his or her choices. Okay? So that's idea number three for making magic uh, marriage. Magical again. Are you ready for idea number four? Please chime in in the comments. I'm on a roll here. Mm. Okay. Idea number four for making marriage magical again. Digital cut down. Like big time. <laughs> if you want to make marriage magical again, put down your phones. Put down your phones. Turn them off. Disconnect completely. And start really looking at your partner. I believe that, this is my personal belief, that the digital devices, they're bringing a lot of good to the world, but they're literally ruining marriages because we are constantly occupied with content on our phone. There is no way that your partner can compete with all the cool and shiny things and interesting things on your phone. He just can't, he or she. So put the phone away, disconnect for the entire weekend, turn it off and just watch. Something really interesting happens when you do that because all of a sudden when you don't have this thing, your partner becomes the new shiny object of affection and attention. So I speak from experience. So tip number four is for making marriage magical again is put down your phones. Tip number five, idea number five, concept number five for making marriage magical again is find a hobby together or an activity that you can do together. What do you do with your partner? Share in the comments. Maybe play a board game. Just the two of you for fun. Maybe catch every sunset together. Every sunset. So this is a journey that me and Guy are doing right now. Catching every sunset of the week together. It's a challenge and we love it. And we know that every day at 10 minutes to 5 here in Texas, we meet and we walk over to the lake to watch, to catch the sunset. So... This concept is just doing something fun together. You can walk together every day after work. You can do gardening together. Something fun that's not on your to-do list, but is on your fun list. Okay? And then um, the next important thing to think about is to cut all criticism to zero. If you want to make marriage magical again, get criticism out of your marriage. Zero. <laughs> no more criticizing. Sit down and learn nonviolent communication. Look up Marshall Rosenberg on YouTube and watch all his videos about how to communicate nonviolently. Watch them together. We did it. Learn how to speak your needs instead of your criticism. Learn how to share how you feel what you need. So, it could sound like this. I have a need for your attention in the evening. And when you're watching TV, I feel alone. Or I have a need to be seen by you and I feel that you are not looking at me anymore. Or I have a need, a need to share the responsibility for the homekeeping and I need for you to do your share without me asking. And your partner can say things like, you know, we're talking about needs, right? We're talking needs, no criticism. He can say things like, I have a need for us to be together intimately a few times a week without me asking. Or maybe he can say, 
I have a need to feel important for you. And when you're so busy with the house and the kids and all the activities, I don't feel important. So sit down with your partner and learn how to communicate your needs to each other without judgment and without criticism. Okay, so he's not supposed to know what's going on inside of you and you're not supposed to know what's going on inside of him. So you need to speak your needs daily. Shall we go on? Is this resonating with you ladies? I'd love for you to chime in to, to the comments. So let's talk about self-care for a second and self-care within uh, the marriage framework, the marriage context. So first of all, um, make sure you're engaging in self-care weekly. Meditate, walk outside alone, uh, do candlelit baths, manicure, time in nature alone, whatever, whatever makes you joyful, go swimming alone. Do things that make you feel joy and make you feel beautiful. But don't forget to encourage your partner to engage in self-care daily too. And with men, it's almost more difficult for them to acknowledge that they need self-care. So it is much sexier when your partner is well-rested and smiling and just joyful and looking amazing and cared for than having a stressed out mess of a partner that is not breathing, right? So if your partner is neglecting his looks or his self-care or her looks or and her self-care, it is your responsibility too. If I'm depleted and I hate the whole world and I haven't showered in three days and I'm wearing stained shirts and yoga pants, I hope that I'd be able to pick pick it up, pick up on it on my own, but it is also the responsibility of my partner, the per person closest to me and sharing the day with me to look at me and say, it's time for a break. Go engage in self-care. Go shower. Go dress beautifully. Go for a drive. Go buy yourself something and feel beautiful again. So if your wife is not feeling beautiful, you have a role to play here too. And if your husband is not feeling handsome anymore, you have a very important role here, very important. So we actually did a wear something that makes you feel beautiful every day challenge. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, the way it went is you have to wear one article of clothing that makes you feel beautiful. It makes you feel attractive again <laughs> that makes you feel oh there's a dog that just ran away from his owners <laughs> that makes you feel like your hot stuff again because guess what mamas you are hot stuff you may have forgotten it you may think uh, your beautiful days are over but you would be wrong if you think that uh, we have to help you fall in love with you again. And maybe for the first time ever, before we invite your partner to fall in love with you again and again and again. I'm here to repeat this. You need to find a way to fall in love with you again before you invite your partner to fall in love with you again and again. That's my partner and my son back then. <laughs> So, the next step in making marriage magical again is make your partner your number one priority. That's simple. Put him or her first every day. Send them text messages. Make them a meal. Fix their side of the bed for them. Surprise them. Make them feel important. Literally say it once a day, every day, in your own words. You are so important to me. I am the luckiest woman in the world to have found you. You matter so much. This family would not be the same without you. 
without your wisdom, without your magic, I would not be the same without you. You are the love of my life. If you're not at a point where you're able to say those things out loud, and I have been at a point where we were not able to say those things out loud because there was too much tension, then it is time to roll up your sleeves and start tending to this garden every single day again. So start with a small journey. What can you do today? What can you do today to make your marriage magical again? If you want some ideas, chime in in the comments. Would you like me to give you some ideas that you could start right away with? All right, so some ideas. So we have to text each other a love text once a day. Journey. Chime in if you like that one. We have the sit and have tea together once a day. Journey. We have the shower together once a week, journey. We have the meditate together once a week and then discuss, journey. We have the write together once a week and then share, journey. We have the smile to each other once a day, journey. We have the go for a walk together once a day, journey. We go the leave a letter on each other's pillow once a day, journey. We have the watch every sunset together, journey. We have the watch every sunrise together, journey. We have the read a book of choice together, journey. So the journeys you can do together to make marriage magical again are literally endless. Now, it also depends on what season of your life you're at. So if you have babies, then you cannot do a major dramatic journey to make your marriage magical again. But the magic hides in the little things, in the little journeys. You can text your partner once a day a love text. That is not bigger than life. You can do that. And I think he can do the same. So you get the direction this is going. But making your marriage magical again is not just going to happen. It won't. I waited for it to happen. It won't. <laughs> It's a journey. It's made up of many, many baby journeys. And from my experience, um, we need to tend to this garden daily. Um, otherwise, it grows weeds and it dries up. And then that's when it's the hardest to make it magical again. So I wish you all magical gardens in your relationships and in your marriages and may 2020 be the year that you make your marriage magical again. May 2020 be the year that you look into each other's eyes and you see little hearts inside again. May 2020 be the year that you and your partner embark on many uh, baby journeys to bring back the magic into your love life. And may 2020 be the year that you fall in love again and again and again and again. That's how it works. Because long-term love is this sweet, sweet uh, reservoir that nourishing nourishes um, those that persist on the deepest levels possible. This cannot be seen this nourishment, it can only be felt. It's very different than young love stories. It is deep. It has so much meaning um, and purpose. And it is truly a calling. I am called to serve my partner and he is called to serve me and together, nothing can break us, nothing. This is different than young love. This is mature, strong love that has taken years to build. 
And this is something you can only reach after climbing mountain after mountain after mountain together. So marriage, like parenting, requires work. But this isn't just work. It is your great work. It is your masterpiece. It's the mountain that holds everything else in your life. So make it a strong mountain and make it nourishing for the two of you, like a fountainhead that keeps delivering you an endless flow of joy and youth and sparks and meaning. So much meaning and so much purpose and a desire to serve someone else on the deepest levels and be served and loved like no one has ever loved you before and no one will ever like no one will ever love you again. Now, I leave you and I encourage you and your partner to sit down and plan your marriage journey. Happy journey, Mama. I'm here for any questions about uh, making marriage magical again. I'll hang out for uh, a minute or two and see if anybody has any questions. And then we will part. So I'm wondering um, if any of this resonated with you. What are the big challenges of your marriage journey? I would love it if you wrote in the comments, what are the two biggest challenges uh, of making marriage magical again for you? Um, what would make a huge difference in your life? What will it take for you to embark on a project with your partner to make marriage magical again? So this and more would be so, so awesome to, uh, to have you chime in about. And I will be reading all your comments even after this broadcast is over. And I will be replying to your comments after this broadcast is over. So I am looking forward to hearing from you about your own uh, marriage journey and how you think that you can make it magical again because you can. You really, truly can. And it starts today with baby journeys. Uh, to be continued, there's so much to say about this. And I would love for you to let me know what you would like for me to speak about in our next uh, Journey Talks about making marriage magical again. Talk to you soon, Mas.